Hi everyone, back to another more YouTube channel. It's Chris back with my Rand Stroke Thought of the Day and it's all about Flash Gordon, or not so Flash Gordon, as he was against Southampton the other day. Yes, we also saw Anthony Gordon playing in the opening fixture for Newcastle United. We all knew he would. He's a massive player for Newcastle, but he didn't quite hit the dizzying heights that he normally hits when he plays for us. And it's prompted a couple of questions, I think. And I think questions that are valid to ask, really. I mean... I wasn't really thinking about this until I must give them a shout out. I was listening to the, the True Faith podcast, a great show with Alex and the guys and uh, the brilliant Norman Riley raised this uh, point, which made my brain start ticking over. So uh, uh, credit to you, Norman, for this one. You've uh, you've definitely made me think about this in a bit more detail, whether you meant to or not, mate. But uh, yeah, Norman asked the question, has Anthony Gordon's head been turned by all these Liverpool links in the summer? Now, and I kind of wanted to tell myself I hadn't, but the more I go back and think about it, the more I think... There's been real silence over this. Now, you think about the way the club responded to Eddie Howe being linked to the England job when Southgate moved on. It was quite quick. There was, you know, there was comments by the club. There was comments by Eddie himself um, through all the speculation, just to kind of put that out straight away. But ever since this talk of Anthony going to Liverpool to bounce the PSR books, that, that doesn't seem to have been squashed or quelled or flicked away by the club or the player or the manager. And I'm getting a little bit concerned that, that maybe there might be a bit more in this than we actually thought that there could have been in the first place. So if you didn't know already, the, the talk was that we were apparently in discussions with Liverpool to sell Anthony Gordon um, to balance the PSR books before we decided to sell Elliot Anderson and Yakuba Minter. Now, there is no smoke without fire. Liverpool would not be talking to us about Anthony Gordon if it didn't believe there was a chance they could sign that player. Obviously, Anthony Gordon was away at the time being criminally underused by England and Southgate, who thankfully is now fucked off in terms of the England team, not just for, for Anthony Gordon, but for any other player who wants a chance to progress over a Yorkshire pudding who kind of kick his own ass. then your chance is here. Southgate has fucked off. Rejoice and celebrate England players of tomorrow. But, yeah, so he was over there. There was no real talk about it. I can imagine he didn't want to comment on it because he was concentrating on the, on the tournament. So... You know, it hasn't really been addressed. Um, there was speculation that apparently Newcastle were going to offer him a new and improved contract. Um, that's not really happened either. That's gone very quiet. So it does make me wonder what is going on here. And then you see the performance Anthony put in the other day. Now, there could be an easy reason for this. You know, you know, talking about, and I'm not saying no one's jumping to hyperbole or speculation. That's not his style. If you listen to him, he's a, he's a brilliant guy on the podcast for True Faith. But, you know, it is a valid question because we're so used to these high levels of performance from Anthony Gordon. To see that dip, and he wasn't shit by any means, you know, he still ran at the full back and tried to make stuff happen and, you know, got body checked and clotheslined by the, the filth that was Southampton. But he didn't quite look himself, he looked quite laborious, he couldn't be arsed. And, you know, Lewis Hall got a lot of criticism, but I think Anthony Gordon didn't really help him out. Normally Gordon's up and down like a five and on a pole on that left-hand side, defending as much as he is attacking. But Lewis Hall was left exposed on a good few occasions because Gordon was, was quite laborious, he was quite lethargic, he was kind of trundling back a bit. Didn't seem to have that zip, that vigour, that willingness to win, pumping the crowd up like he always does. That wasn't there either. He looked just pissed off, you know, looked a bit, you know, annoyed really in many ways. And I don't know if it was just because the game turned so ugly or whether he's, he's lacking match sharpness, he's maybe frustrated at himself, or if there's a little bit more into it, has his head been turned? Now, if you take off your black and white blinkers for a minute, Gordon Liverpool makes sense for Anthony Gordon in many ways. He's a Liverpool lies a scouser. He grew up a Liverpool fan. That's well documented. He played for the blue side. They hate him anyway. So going back to Liverpool is not really going to change his relationship with the Everton fans, I think. But, you know, a chance to go and play for his boyhood club is always going to be an appeal. I don't care where you are in the world of football, it's always going to be an appeal to you. The England situation, yes, Southgate has gone. But if Lee Cosley is going to be the guy stepping in, he's probably very much copy and paste of a Southgate. Does Anthony Gordon think that playing for Newcastle limits his options to start for England? That's something there as well. I don't want it to happen for what it's worth, but you have to look at all the different angles, whether you know with Newcastle fans or not. So it does make sense for him to go there if Liverpool want him. The other counter argument to that is he probably wouldn't be a guaranteed starter that he would be at Newcastle. Um, I know Mo Salah, they're probably planning for life after Mo Salah, maybe to say Gordon is the man to step in and take over that mantle. But as it stands at the minute, he'd probably be struggling at game time against Mo Salah and, and, and Diaz as well. So he wouldn't have as much of a guarantee to start 
in that eleven as he would do for Newcastle. Um, he has loved the Newcastle. You know, he, he seems to have bought into the project, hook, line, and sinker. But I just worry whether these talks to Liverpool have unsettled the player in the summer. So that that is something that we all have to consider, and I hope that isn't the case. But we know what modern day football is like. We've just seen with Miguel Almiron's deal, agents negotiating for as much money as humanly possible. You know, the agent could be in, in Gordon's yet telling him that moving Liverpool is the right thing for him because he wants a big fat payday as well. So hopefully that isn't the case. But the most likely scenario about Gordon not looking as sharp as he could have been, because he wasn't alone. Bruno looked like he was struggling, looked like he'd just come out of that Brazilian wedding after a few shots, I think, Bruno. Uh, you know, grew into the game later on, you know, and uh, won some great free kicks and pumped the crowd up and did the usual Bruno thing. Isaac wasn't quite his best either, but Gordon really did look nowhere near the Gordon that, that, that we know about. And it could just be the case he hasn't had a pre-season, so he's not really match sharp. If you think about Gordon's last pre-season to this pre-season, you couldn't get two more different worlds apart scenarios if you tried. He was with the under-21s, he was playing week in, week out. He was a star performer, he helped them win that tournament. He then come back in Newcastle pre-season camp and all the players say, I remember Big Dan Burns saying he just looked way fitter and sharper than anybody else. So Gordon already started pre-season way ahead of everybody else last season and he continued that end of the season and he was electric for Newcastle United. Whereas this season, he's been criminally underused by Southgate. That could have knocked his confidence too. You know, thinking he's not good enough to get ahead of the likes of Eze and Jared Bowen and players like that. It could have just given him a really sad, disappointing summer and it's maybe took a little bit of zip out of out of his step, really, you know, because he's a chest out confidence player as Gordon. And if he feels that that manager at the time didn't rate him, you know, it could have really affected him until he gets around Eddie, gets around Newcastle, feels that love, feels that positive vibe again. In the next two or three weeks, we'll see the Gordon that we all know and love. And I think that's most likely what the reason is. Um, the window is still got two weeks to go. We know we want to sign players, Mark Gahey and hopefully a right winger. But there's still time. Liverpool haven't signed a single player this cut summer transfer window so far, much to the frustration of their fans. You know, they won 2 0 against Ipswich, but it didn't look great by and large. They look like they're missing a little something. And I just wonder whether Arnie Slot wants to go for players that are hard to prize away from other teams. Maybe Gordon's one of them. And we might see some late activity from Liverpool going for Gordon if they think there's a chance there. But I hope that the club will rebuff it because I think it'll be a really, really bad move, I think, to buy a player to replace Anthony Gordon's quality in this Newcastle United squad. You end up spending more money than you're spending on Mark Gahey at seven and a half and you already don't want to pay that. So I think it's a stupid move if the club do it. I would much rather see them give Gordon a new contract and reward him for his hard work in Newcastle, make him feel loved, get him back in his groove. I think a couple of more weeks training with Eddie Howe and playing for Newcastle in the intensity and style that we play, I think we'll see Gordon get back to those levels. Transfer window will be shut. All the speculation can get in the bin, and we'll get flashback to the standards that we know and love. But let us know in the comments below. Are you worried if Gordon's head's been turned after that performance, or do you just think it was a lack of match fitness? We're not trying to create hyperbole. Norman certainly is, and I'm certainly not. I talked off the back of this, but I do think it's a viable question that you have to ask yourself. Hopefully it isn't more than just a lack of match sharpness, but in modern day football, you cannot not ask the questions, especially when you're doing content like this, because that's the whole point. After all, guys, we can agree or disagree. We don't need to be a knob about it. Don't be a prick or you'll get the flick. Let us know in the comments below if you agree or disagree. The Gordon's head's been turned. Either way, we always like to hear from you. If you take the time, the type of comment will take the time to reply. Like and subscribe, guys. Keep it ever more. Mark and I will be back on Monday night to talk about all the stuff from the Southampton game and beyond in the state of Newcastle United. Look towards the coming games as well. Have a belt weekend. We'll catch you later. Cheers.